everything you learned in history class was a lie. Well, maybe not everything, but they skipped the best parts. Introducing Stupiracy, where stupidity meets conspiracy. Ever heard of the Olympic marathon that nearly killed its runners? Or the time a pope put another pope's corpse on trial? Join me, Scott Rizzuto, and Tim McKernan as we uncover the most outrageous historical moments and mind-blowing conspiracies you won't believe actually happened. Tune in to Stupiracy for your weekly dose of historical absurdity. Available wherever you get your podcasts. Remember, history is dumb, but laughing at it is smart. And now, live from the TCL Broadcast Studios, it's Joe Suchere and Patrick Royce with Sports Talk. Such uh, had an appearance today at O'Gara's. Uh, no, yeah, at O'Gara's out at the fairgrounds for uh, back to the 50s. Saw a lot of great, wonderful 57, 58 Chevys, I'm sure. Those I are bet, yeah. fantastic uh, vehicles. Uh, this uh, weekend, uh, tomorrow night specifically, best night of uh, high-class racing of the year at Canterbury Park. And Andrew Offerman, the Senior Director of Racing, is uh, with us. How you doing, sir? I'm doing well, Patrick. How are you? It's not going to rain. Finally, it's like the first <laughs> Saturday since Kentucky Derby Day that we're actually going to get decent weather. Now, the big race is on the turf. How high is that grass? It's about eight inches right now. It um, actually looks gorgeous. It's about as good a condition as it's been in all year. Do the uh, do the horses like eight inches, or would they like it trimmed a little more than that? No, they they typically like it more uh, eight between eight and ten inches. We keep it pretty long. It helps retain moisture and give it some good give. That is the Mystic Lake Derby, and what a f- you got fourteen. Are they all still in? Yeah, all fourteen of them are wow. still scheduled to run uh, the largest field that we can run and the largest field in the race's history. So we've got horses from. Kentucky, New York, Louisiana, um, all over the place coming in for this race. It should be pretty exciting. We actually have a horse that uh, last ran over in the United Arab Emirates in the UAE Derby. So all over, including some that have come from across the pond. Wow. Now, a $200,000 purse, but do we have add-ons with all the entries? How, how much are we paying here? 200000 was what will go out in total, but there, uh, we have a unique program this year that enticed some new trainers to come in and play, but we have a $25,000 trainer's bonus to the trainer that performs best on the entirety of tomorrow's race card. And five stakes races, but uh, we'll, we'll stick with the Mystic Lake Derby for now. Who is the, uh, who is the foreigner that came in? It's a horse by the name of Reride. and it's actually based in the United States, uh, Winchell Thoroughbreds and Steve Atkinson. Oh, yeah. Uh, connections that are, many are likely familiar with as the owner of Gunrunner, but the horse uh, ran over on Dubai World Cup Day and ran uh, third in the Derby that day uh, and did not go forward and run in any of the other Kentucky Derby preps and is actually making his first start back since that race. I see he, he is uh, looking at him here. He's rather lightly raced, so uh, he's got only uh, five or six career starts, right? Correct, yes. Only one start on the turf, in which he won, so it looks like they're uh, seeing if that may be his preferred surface moving forward. And uh, Winchell and Asmussen, uh, this must be a well-bred uh, animal, huh? Absolutely, yep. Candy <laughs> rides the sire, goes for a cool $80,000 stud fee. All right, and uh, of course the one that caught my eye was the hard boot coming in. <laughs> Because uh, coming in from California, won the hundred thousand dollar Silky Sullivan uh, yeah. race out at uh, Golden Gate Fields, and uh, you know what? I was so inspired that Silky Sullivan has won the coveted Sports Person of the Day award that we'll <laughs> be giving out at uh, five oh three today, and so I can teach the youth of America here about this. Uh, phenomenal uh come from behind horse of the uh late 50s so yeah that's that's awesome there's some great youtube videos of silky oh i was watching them today i spent 20 i went to find one i spent 20 minutes <laughs> watching him it's he looks like he's out walking taking a walk in the park about halfway around the track and he ends up just firing unbelievable what i but hard boot must be a pretty good contender too huh yeah, absolutely. He fits right in there as, I believe, fourth choice on the morning line coming in from the likes, like you said, of Northern and, and I guess most recently, actually, at Santa Anita in Southern California. Um, but he has a late running style that should probably suit this turf course well. Uh, we don't see a whole lot that come from Southern California, but he should be right there at the end of the day. 
Uh, looks like he might run a little bit from behind too. He was in Correct. the Snow Chief uh, in last month or earlier this month at the, and finished second at the. Uh, so, who is the morning line favorite? Captivating Moon, another horse that runs from very well off the pace, is the morning line favorite, owned by uh, actually local owner Lothenbach Stables, who has horses all over the country. This one's been based uh, most recently in Kentucky and ran a very solid second in a graded stake uh, on the undercard of the Kentucky Derby on the turf that day. Uh, but he's very similar to Hardboot in that he will be likely you know, 13th or 14th early in the race trying to make one huge late run. Well, uh, that's, that is not unusual on the turf courses to see uh, to uh, be sitting there uh, cheering like crazy for your horse that's uh, led the thing all the way around, and then a uh, whoop, here they come, baby. <laughs> exactly. uh, the the turf is uh, the uh, turf uh, track at Canterbury's always been well regarded, and you've had some of your uh, best races on it. How have you had to cancel a few turf races uh, to this point because of the rain? Yeah, we've had a tougher time staying on the turf than I'd like to see. I believe we've come off of it three times so far this year, but our uh, turf crew as a whole has done a great job improving the drainage of it over the years, and uh, we've been able to stay on it much more than I maybe would have expected based on some of the difficult weather we've faced. Uh, You're going to run the uh, Mystic Lake Derby as the fifth uh, uh, race, and actually the Dark Star race is sixth. Is that for uh, for, uh, off-track places, sports books and stuff? Is that a better time of night for that one? Yeah, twofold. So with us starting uh, a little bit later in the day than you usually see for most of the bigger races throughout the country, it does help. Uh, keeping it at a reasonable hour for the East Coast supporters. And then also our turf course isn't lit, so it uh, forces us usually to run our turf races a little bit earlier in the card uh, and run our dirt races later on in the evening. Uh, how has the uh, Saturday night post time worked out for you? This uh, this week is a unique week. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've been running Saturday days throughout yep. most of the season, but uh, it, it typically drives very good off-track numbers when we are able to run on Saturday nights. Um, And I think we'll have a good night tomorrow with some of the promotions that we're doing, coupled with the fact that uh, some of the local events in other in other areas are taking place during the day. So we're looking forward to a great night tomorrow night. Okay, uh, my guy, Dark Star. The uh, how many years now? Unfortunately, six, I believe. Right? Correct. Uh, Yeah. The Dark Star Cup. uh, And uh, what are we paying for this one? Fifty grand, huh? The fifty thousand dollar race. For those that remember, it's it's kind of a reboot of Dark's favorite race, the old Chaucer Cup. At six and a half furlongs on the main track, which is the unique distance, and uh, harbored what he always called his favorite race of his life, which was uh, 1988's version where Don's Irish Melody and Hudak oh, yeah. went at it all the way down the stretch, and Don's Irish Melody pulled away to at the time what was a world record time for the distance. Uh, who is uh, who we got in that race? It's a, it's a good group of a couple of uh, Chicago horses mixed with a couple of local favorites. Malibu Max is the morning line favorite. Uh, a horse that won a handful of times on the card over the last couple of years and uh, won the Paul Bunyan Stakes, the smaller stakes race that we ran on opening weekend. Uh, a couple of other contenders, one's Bourbon Cowboy, who ran second to him on opening weekend, and Wings Locked Up, who comes off of a victory in the Honor the Hero, the five furlong turf sprint that we ran earlier in the year. So should be a competitive race that's filled with uh, quite a bit of speed, so maybe we'll see a couple more of them go at it down the wire in Darkie's memory. What's the uh, word out there? Where's Justify going to go, Saratoga, or what are we hearing? I'm not hearing much of anything, so I mm-hmm. think it's going to be interesting to see. You know, Baffert uh, in the past with American Pharaoh used the Haskell in New Jersey into mm-hmm. the Travers at Saratoga, and my guess would be that he will use something similar if that's the campaign they're going to attempt mm-hmm. and see if they can uh, avenge American Pharaoh's loss and the Travers stakes by trying to complete that unique uh, American Pharaoh certainly was a fine animal, but this guy's a monster. Yeah, the thing that... Uh, what did I say? He's 200 pounds heavier than Secretariat yeah. or something? Yeah, and the thing that, uh, you know, as I sat back and kind of watched the Triple Crown Trail, the thing that unfolded, I believe the statistic I heard was that he went from being a maiden to a Triple Crown winner in 111 days. <laughs> and um, people talk a lot about things you'll never see again or unique accomplishments, but, Patrick, I can't ever see that happening again. To break your maiden in February and... And a few months later, be staring at a triple crown, undefeated triple crown winner. That's an unbelievable achievement. Yeah, our guy Mikey Smith, uh, what's uh, from the early years at uh, Canterbury, and uh, he can uh, he can really cut the schedule back now at age fifty-two because uh, he's done what uh, very few jockeys get a chance to do. 
Absolutely, and uh, you know, I couldn't be happier for somebody when you, you saw kind of how he reacted to that victory. It, uh, people probably remember Mike from being the regular rider of a lot of horses, but maybe most notably Zenyatta, who yeah. suffered that really heartbreaking defeat in her last career race, and this felt like uh, maybe a little moment of vindication for Mike where he can look at all the amazing things he's done in his career but then to top it off with a, that special of a horse and, and running the Triple Crown gamut, that was quite an achievement, and you could tell he was uh, very overcome by the emotions of the moment. Well, uh, the big uh, the big uh, problem really in the early years of Canterbury was when they closed the ferry bridge there to keep the public from trying to get uh, to Canterbury uh, down south, and now they closed 35W on you. <laughs> they're, they, they're out to get you, but yeah, there's, you'll still have a nice crowd there this weekend. Not a doubt about it. We got a, at least we got a 101 bridge that no longer floods, so we got ways to get here. <laughs> All right, thanks, Andrew. Thanks, Patrick. Thanks All right, you. Andrew Offerman, uh, great guy. He's a great young fella, loves the horses, and has uh, been out at Canterbury quite a while now. But a good weekend to go to Canterbury, and these are these are good horses. Fourteen of them coming in for this to go after this two hundred thousand dollars. I mean, not they're all not all coming in. Some of them are local, but uh, when you get the shippers coming in from uh, guys like Steve Asmussen, uh, that means. Uh, you're getting pretty good horses. We'll be back. This is the ride with Ricey and Manny, and that's about it. Everybody else is gone. Right. Jeff Passan, who uh, breaks a lot of stories for Yahoo uh, Sports on Major League Baseball. Uh, I've ran a credit. Somebody else might have it, but I saw it from him first today. Major League Baseball has banned teams from signing players affiliated with the Mexican League. Uh, now, it has nothing to do with building a wall or uh, supporting uh, the Donald, uh, uh, putting kids in uh, cages or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, they have a, they're alleging corruption and fraud have plagued its transactions with the league and that it wants a fair, organized, and transparent system before returning resuming its relationship with the mexican league and this you know july 2nd is international signing date okay so the they aren't going to be able to sign the major league baseball is not going to be able to sign the mexican guy players in the mexican league wow uh and basically what it is is you know major league baseball has the deal with japan and korea where the, the they they sign a guy and generally speaking the team will get 25% of the deal's value, you know. Okay. In Mexico, they sign these kids to lifetime contracts, some of them as young as age 15. Oh, my God. And they cannot escape. I mean, there's no get to be 30 and you can be a free agent or leave or sign. It's it's for life. And the teams take up to 75% of the signing bonuses, according to sources. Mm. And uh, Major League Baseball wants to work out an equitable plan where the players get more of the money, which means more of them would want to come to the States and play, right? Right. Uh, So there's apparently three teams down there that have most of these players. The team in Tijuana, the team in, uh, I I don't know where, the the Mexico City Reds, uh, Diabolos Rojos, that must be the Mexico City Reds. And the team in Yucatan. And they uh, have pretty much refused baseball's attempt to get them to change their ways and to give more money to the players. The the best Mexican prospect in baseball today is uh, Luis Urias, uh, who was uh, with the Mexico City Reds. uh, And uh, Julio Urias... uh, is with the Dodgers. They're brothers. Right. Yeah. They're brothers. Two good infielders. I was just, just going to ask if they were related. And, yeah. uh, and the, he basically gave his whole bonus to sign with the Dodgers. He got none of it. Mm. He just signed with the Dodgers. And it's an arrangement long, according to Passan, it's an arrangement long loathed by MLB uh, Players Association. And uh, it is, and it's the the MLB Players Association and MLB are together on this, trying to get Mexico to uh, to stop being so damn corrupt in this system. Uh, good luck to that. Apparently, one of the best ways for Mexico to make baseball has been, I mean, to make a profit has been to uh, uh, these teams is to buy 
<laughs> claiming the whole damn uh, taking as much yeah, as they possibly can. Much, yeah. So uh, among the current major leaguers from Mexico are the San Diego Padres third baseman Chris. Christian Villanueva, who's kind of come out of nowhere, and he's got 16 home runs. Uh, Roberto Asuna, who's on probation. I mean, it's suspension right now mm-hmm. because of domestic violence. Adrian Gonzalez, too, right? Uh, yeah, he was. He was. Yeah. And uh, it's, uh, you know, good for them. Hopefully, uh, they, uh, what Major, what, what Passon says in this article is Major League Baseball said uh, that. They are. We are hopeful that LMBs, which is Liga Liga Mexican Baseball, okay, position on the reasonable enough reasonableness of our final proposal will change. But if not, we will discuss alternative strategies for developing players in Mexico. In other words, try to work it out with the government to set up. Yeah, set up. <laughs> Camps. I I don't know if I want to be coaching oh. down there. If if some of these teams have some buddies in the, another industry down there that's uh, very profitable, could this be an ugly negotiation? Will this get pretty intense? Sounds think, like it or? has been. Yeah, sounds like it has. You got a, you got a bunch of sixty five year old Mexicans down there smoking cigars, and who's been able to have the players under their thumb their whole lives? And Complete control. It used it, yeah. to be. You used to see quite a few U.S. players down there in the summer playing. I used to always look at the box scores or the the statistics to try to find, you know, old old big leaguers who are now forty and playing somewhere in the Mexican league. Any ex twins or anything go down there? Oh, once in a while, but I haven't seen any lately. But okay. yeah, Lou Ford played there. Did he? Yeah, Lou I Ford. thought he was only. I thought Lou only went over to like Japan or somewhere. No, played, I think Lou played there. Did he go down to Mexico too? Yeah. Now what? there's the Mexican Winter League, which mm-hmm. is one thing. That's a developmental. That's, thing. But that's that's different, the, right? And this is the summer league. This okay. is the, and it used to be considered to be triple A level baseball. I don't think it is anymore. Mm-hmm. But uh, you know, Twins used to send Tony Manage down there in the Winter League a couple of years. But uh, the summer league is different. Might be some. Hot days at the old ball yard uh, would before so. some small crowds. Yeah, I once covered a twin series. The twins were opening the season. It wasn't a series. They were playing an exhibition series in San Diego, and the middle game was in Tijuana. And this was when you could go to Tijuana. You didn't have to worry about it. And But we got to the ballpark, and I brought my uh, computer of my radio shack like I was going to plug it in someplace and send my copy. <laughs> he didn't even have a damn pay phone. It was, uh, it was not, uh, not what we were used to. That's for sure. Wow. But anyway, yeah, they, uh, they, uh, they are in a battle with them. And, uh, I'm sure that the, uh, the, uh, the Mexican folks who have run these leagues for years are not going to be easy to roll well, over. But I've always thought it was, for it, I though. always thought with that that place Consider, you let the Dominican and the Puerto Rico and Venezuela p- produce so many more players. So I, I know hot soccer's crazy over there, but uh, mm-hmm. I've always thought they really don't get nearly enough talent out of Mexico, and they may get none the way it's going. What time of year are they playing these ball games? Right now. Right now. When yeah. it's like 120. Yeah, yeah, it's a little warm. Yeah. Some of them, uh, some of the ballparks might, the grass, those could be, they might have a little dust on the infield. It could be a little crusty. Like that. Yeah, yeah, it could be, uh, could be kind of bad. All right, uh, we shall return. We'll see what uh, is Brucey. We got Brucey. What's uh, what's going on today, Brucey? We do, Brucey, and uh, it is now time for the Your Money Now report. It comes to us courtesy of our friends in Owatonna at Federated Insurance. Here is Mr. Bruce Vale with the Your Money Now report. Hello, Bruce. It's 120 degrees, but it's a dry heat, so it's not too right. bad. Right. Stocks were mixed to end the week. The Dow Jones Industrial Average, though, did close higher, snapping an eight-session losing streak. The Dow gained 119 points, closing at 24,580. The Nasdaq Composite lost 20 points. The S&P 500 gained five, but all three indexes were down for the week. OPEC nations today agreed to a deal to boost oil output by about 600,000 barrels a day, moving more modestly than expected to curb higher oil prices. The gas price tracking company GasBuddy said that should dash hopes 
for significantly lower prices at the gas pumps this summer. The House narrowly passed a Republican-written bill that reauthorizes farm programs while also imposing controversial new work requirements on food stamp recipients. The Senate is expected to vote next week on its version of the bill, which funds crop insurance and payments to farmers when commodity prices or revenue drop below set levels. The new work requirements are set to get stripped out of the Senate bill. I'm Bruce Vail with your money now on 1500 ESPN. Okay, Bruce, have a good weekend. We'll talk to you again next week. We'll check traffic here, and we've got a semi-tip over to talk about this report sponsored by Jersey Mike Subs. And troopers and first units are calling at the ramp from northbound 61 to westbound 494 down in Newport. That ramp is closed due to a semi laying on its side. It's going to be there all afternoon. It's also leaking diesel fuel. Northbound 35E, 494 to 94, you're looking at 16 minutes there. The southbound side at 15, but we do have a center lane blocker at Randolph. The sub above difference is substantial. After all, the giant got its name for a reason. It ain't little. Jersey. Saudi Arabia's got to be what? Eight, nine hours ahead of us? Ten, maybe? I, I can't even speculate. Yeah, well, England's <laughs> six. England six. Yeah, right? So that's a so good. It's got to be another four. Maybe. Sure. Yeah, another probably four. three, four. I'm going to go with that. Well, uh, probably at uh, middle of the day tomorrow, and in Saudi Arabia Sunday, Saudi Arabia will lift its ban on women driving. Oh. Uh, starting Sunday, women can drive. Now they still need to get permission from a male. Uh, if it's not a husband or a, or a dad, dad or something, they still need to get permission for virtually everything they do Jeez. in life. Yeah. So they don't have to have written permission to drive but from the, the uh, brother or the dad or whoever it is. But they do, if, if they are commanded not to, then, yeah. you know, then they can be ratted out. Uh, I, was reading, I was reading a, a New York Times story on a, on a woman who's 29 years old who has been twice divorced, and, but her brother is her guardian. No, right. Her brother is the person she has to get permission from. Now she's got a brother who says, go do whatever the hell you want. The to, best right? kind of brother. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah. Uh, uh, what brought on the change, Patrick? Well, many years of uh, complaints from women, but it hasn't all gone well. Uh, a few weeks ago, as this approached, the, uh, the public prosecutor uh, arrested 17 different individuals who were involved in the feminist movement in oh, Saudi Arabia. You get arrested. Mostly women. Yeah. <laughs> uh, a few men who were husbands or something also were arrested. Of the 17 detainees, five women and three men have been released until investigations are complete, but the rest remain under arrest. Among those de- detained since May 15th are Lawan Al I'm hot old, I guess, a, 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 a high profile feminist who previously was detained for 73 days in 2014 after attempting to drive from the United Arab Emirates to Saudi Arabia. No kidding. She got, mm. uh, so she went in and uh, another gal, Aziza uh, something or other, a veteran women's right advocate and uh, another one of their friends, uh, a well-known blogger known as Saudi woman. They're also, she, she's still in, Saudi woman is still in jail too. Um, they're not, uh, they're not... They're not the the uh, kingdom is not taking the uh, the feminist movement too well. No, they're, they're having a hard time. This isn't playing mm-hmm. well. How mm-hmm. do they get a driver's license? Uh, there, are I was just going to ask. Like, are there driver's license? And do I would they imagine. do they know? I would imagine not very many of them really even know how to drive, just because they've been yes banned from doing it. Yeah, they're like a lot of those uh, rural housewives that uh, right. from. Two generations ago, right. who never drove. Since mid-1916, these women who are in jail now have campaigned to end the male guardianship system. That's the key. That's that the sounds key like there. that's it's the not so much thing, the yeah. driving. It's yeah. the uh, it's, they want to be able to tell the husband or the brother or the dad to take a hike. Yeah, right? just like <laughs> rightfully, like yeah, everywhere you know, else. Uh, yeah, this was the last uh, country in the world to uh, ban women from driving. No kidding. Yes. Uh, but, wow. Uh, 
course, these are our allies because they give us oil. You know, and, and, and we sell them airplanes. <laughs> We're gonna we sell them fighter jets. We sell them fighter jets. And then jets. when they move over here, they're always driving. But I'm assuming they have to take our, yes. you know, U.S. Now, apparently, uh, uh, you don't have to, uh, you know, they can wear jeans and walk around. And, oh. Yeah, they don't have to wear the. Uh, oh, the whole burka thing. They, they, they don't have to do called. the whole thing. I, I saw a couple of. I saw a, a photo in the Times of uh, of this gal, this 29 year old, who, like when she was a kid, she'd work on cars with her dad, right? But she couldn't drive them, yeah. but she was fascinated by yeah. them. And now she's her, she's going to start driving Sunday on a motorcycle. She owns Fun. a motorcycle. Cool. There you go. But uh, it's uh, I got a hunch. You know, uh, many people have suggested that. African Americans occasionally get arrested or get stopped for driving while black. We might have a few. I have no idea what you're talking about. That never happens. We might happens. have a few yeah. driving while woman over there. Probably uh, driving yeah. while D- female. D W. It's unfortunate, but you're probably there. right. Yes. Yeah. yeah, we might have. A, you might have to be on your piece. And, and then piece. having written permission from whomever. Well, your you guardian. don't need it written. You don't need permission. But if if let's say this woman's brother didn't want her riding a motorcycle he could tell authorities and then they could, oh boy. they could prevent her from doing it yeah so wow. but she doesn't apparently on this you don't need permission but i suppose if they stop you they she can they can say who's your guardian yeah it it is amazing that we're here we are yeah, 18 years into the 21st <laughs> century and like yes. this we're, yes. we're still we still have this it's even more strict in iran isn't it Yes, but they, the protesters brought that on themselves, man. Back in the Shah's day, I remember students walking or, you know, remember the when it the protest started? It looked like you, US, yeah. UCLA. Yeah, right. Everybody I mean, they, was dressed yeah, they like were all us. Yeah, dressed in jeans. And, yeah. You know, yeah. Didn't, they didn't have to wear it all. And the protesters, like on campuses all over America, you know, death to the Shah, were uh, wearing jeans and, you know, they were, they were, looked like, U.S. Uh, students. They don't have enough hobbies. We need to drop them off some ATVs and side by sides. Well, I think they. I think Saudi Arabia. <laughs> they, they, they got all fun. the ATVs they need. The guys with the money. They yeah, sure it's Saudi do. Arabia. Absolutely. Yeah, they sure do. They sure do. But uh, yeah, tomorrow if you're a Saudi woman, you can drive. So good luck to you out there. Are you predicting carnage? <laughs> no, I was. You know, I. I'm not making any jokes. You know, I, I, I don't want to make any jokes. I know, I'm like, trying to it, get you to, Is though. this a good decision or not? You know? I do wonder if they're going to have... I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I do on. wonder if, like, tomorrow they're, or, like, over the next couple of days, they're just suddenly going to have, like, this long line of, like, of just women just oh, waiting to, to get drive. lessons and get licenses or, and, and all this stuff. Uh, or maybe just... Sunday drive. This is going to be the ultimate Sunday drive because they've never yeah. done it before. You yeah. suppose the smart Saudis are opening up body shops now all over <laughs> everywhere because they're going to be super busy? Yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get a joke or two out of you. That, Come that, on that, here. That could be. That could be. But it's, uh, it's, it is unbelievable when you, uh, when you hear about the crap that still goes on over there. 2018 still happening. Mm-hmm. A lot of uh, a lot of a lot of countries over there. The uh, the gal, uh, you know, they it can be worse you know, when they have the the daughter instead of the son. They take it poorly. Yeah, you know, yeah, they, a lot they, of they cases. don't like that. They take it not. I'm not. They blame I don't know the about daughter. Saudi Arabia, but uh, they uh, a lot of places. It's uh, it's a little weird. I can't believe. I don't know much about Mohammed. Right? I, I never studied the fella. Nor he couldn't I. have been in favor of this. I don't know. He couldn't have been I, in favor of I, this. Well, I'm uh, I'm hesitant to predict. Somebody's I giving don't know. it a bad. Well, somebody's <laughs> giving it a bad read. Is what I'm saying. I, I, it's I, all up to interpretation. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I want to bring something else up again. Okay. Gay marriage. Okay. Remember what oh, I said two, three years ago when it was started, when we were. It'd be, when it, it was, was coming in, right. yeah, when it was still a controversy, I said it'll be good for the economy. Yes, and it was. Look at the economy; it's very, it's good. booming. Mm-hmm. It's very, Trump's very got good. nothing to do with it. It's gay marriage. Yeah, I was right. <laughs> Why do you think the housing market in the Twin Cities has gone nuts? Here we are, back to <laughs> you trying to sell your house <laughs> to a nice gay, 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 gay marriage. <laughs> gay marriage. 
That's it's been extremely good for the economy, just as I predicted. And you're hoping it's going to be good for you. <laughs> yes, that's and true. The selling of your house with a pool. And... I'll even paint the fence for you. Tell me what color you want. And I'll paint the fence. For you. I'll paint the fence for you, fellas. Let's, uh... You should go down to Pride and hand out flyers for that dump this Boy, weekend. Boy, that pool in the back don't look good right now, though. They ripped the liner off, but they haven't put Uh-oh. the new one on. So in she's yet. looking all she's just sitting and there, old. man. It's it's uh, it's not good here. We got we got to get that liner put back in there that's what happens when you put a line by a lawnmower in a pool bad things happen it's so. not advisable no no it's not the way to go i wish i'd had a picture of that you didn't get a, a <laughs> no, picture of the that? wife didn't even take a picture oh, with her cell phone God. while they were waiting to get it out of the that's, pool that's like an inspector clouseau move isn't <laughs> oh, yeah, it yeah, i'm pretty yeah. sure i saw that in a pig bath it, it is it actually <laughs> is all right we'll be back So I uh, took my shot on West 94 today, came through the yeah, tunnel. Yeah, eastbound. Came through the tunnel, eastbound. It yep. was, it was you know, crowded, but I, I got one complaint. Okay. Uh, you know, people are trying to get, to, there's three lanes, none of them are moving fast, and people are trying to get to the next lane. And Jockeying cut, for position. Cut in front of you. Mm-hmm. Right, mm-hmm. yep. Just give me a hint. Exactly. Give me the hint. Exactly. I know you're trying to do it on the sneak, and there are people who will speed up <laughs> right. to prevent you and from that's, doing that's it. That's why I'm, <laughs> I'm not one of them. That's right. what I'm trying Just, to think of what your bumper st- sticker should be, and I think yeah, that go I, ahead. I'm not one of them. Yeah, <laughs> I'm not one. Yeah, go ahead. I'll let you in because what do I care? Right. You know, it's we're not moving anyway. What right. do I care? Yeah. You got you got you got eight feet there. If you want to move over, I'll slow her down and let you move in. But don't just go, ah! So you, you know, are... They just go, they make that quick right. left hand. They knock it in there. Well, people don't like me because I don't follow closely. Well, see I, now... I don't I, this, follow closely. I'm guessing no. then that you are pro-zipper merge because what you're describing yes, is yes. the zipper merge. Yeah. Sure, but... This was no. This these are just guys. They're in right. a lane and they're moving. Right, but it's, the it's same. not a congestion. But it's the same strategy. Yeah, same mentality. You know. But yeah. this this is a guy who moved from the right lane where he wasn't going fast and cut in front of somebody, and <laughs> maybe he thought that guy was irritated or something. Then he got in the little lane. All of a sudden, just oh, you know, because I gave him ten feet. You know. Have you seen the movie? And, but just go ahead and tell me you're coming. <laughs> you're, I'm fine. You're describing the opening scenes of Office Space. Have you yeah. seen that? Where all he does is change lanes, and as soon as yeah. he gets into the next lane, <laughs> yes. the lane he was in starts yes. moving fast. Yeah. Well, this was a guy very jealous. If you got twelve feet ahead of him, right? But again. Okay, you know, you want to get over, what do I care? I'm not getting anywhere in a hurry anyway, but give me a hint. Yeah. Don't just move over because, you know, 90% of, I wasn't, but 90% of the people will be looking at their cell phone, they'll hit you in the rear end and you'll say it's their fault. Now, there is a speed where that has to change, whether it's 30 or 40 miles an hour. Once people start moving along and that car in front of you starts creating spaces in front of you you got to spool oh, it up i, I do i you do, know you can't be one of those i'm not squatters. a guy who's 40 feet behind okay good but i'm good 10 feet yeah 15 yeah yeah i'm i'm not gonna you know because every accident i see on the freeway is somebody hitting the other guy in right. the ass exactly you know yeah, because yeah. they're looking at their phones. Have, have you something. traveled out Highway 12 and seen the dots on the road? And you're supposed to keep two dots yeah, uh, well, between you and the car. That ain't it. No, you're not going to do nobody's that. F- no, no. I mean, that's fine, but that, right. nobody's following that. that. No, yeah. nobody follows that. Uh, they don't during heavy uh, traffic times, but I've seen it during lighter times, midday, where people actually do that. Mm-hmm. But you're right. That that's really difficult to well, do during peak periods. It was just like the Lowry Tunnel. I mean, you know, Pat brought up going eastbound on ninety four. For the Lowry Tunnel, they have the solid white lines because technically you're not supposed to be changing lanes in mm-hmm. that in in the tunnel, right? But people are doing it oh, all yeah. the time. And, they and don't I care. Got... Guilty. <laughs> I think... Yeah, guilty. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But there's no signs that say no changing lanes. No, but, I, but I assume that that's why there's the solid a, white lines, though, either right? Either that or they want you to see it. But they, I sometimes th- you have no option. I right. think they yeah. want you to see it. I think mm-hmm. you can change lanes. I think the big, uh, the big uh, bad one is the double white line yeah. that you see, uh, like on the Min Pass lanes. Oh, yeah, yeah, you go yeah. Through Richfield. Yep. Uh, they really get mad when you cross over the double I, lines. I will yeah. say that going west... 
and approaching the tunnel, it's irresistible to be in the far left lane because it's going twice as fast. Okay, yes. so okay, now yeah. you're and bringing then, you're bringing up a pet peeve that everybody but, talks to me about. But when you but you, you slide over, you, you don't you don't just burst. Over. You know what I'm talking about, right? But, you're in the left lane, westbound 94 in the tunnel, but no, your final goal is westbound yes, 394. But if I have not achieved middle lane. By the time I approach the tunnel, I end up on 55. Once <laughs> yes. the Olson Highway. Yeah, I <laughs> but I think, Manny, I think we've <laughs> actually talked about this, Manny, where people will take go from the far left all the oh, way yeah. over. And they'll just whip you all the way over, no that. hesitation. Yeah. yeah, those are the people that cause seven car crashes. <laughs> yeah. I don't do that. I, I get through the... What I do is, if you get in the far left lane and people are going on to 35... That then opens up into a lane eventually, right? right? Yeah. So okay. I stay in that lane, and then, but if I'm, I got to be in the middle by the time I get 100 yards away from the tunnel, else I'm not getting over there. Let's just but, face it. When you're approaching the tunnel, you have to be ready for all sorts oh, of jackassery. Oh God, yes. yeah. I mean, virtually now, yeah, the, the, back, it's, the right lane it's is... It's absolute anarchy, and anything could happen. Mm-hmm. And let me you tell just you have guys, to be ready for it. Let me tell you guys what happened to me last night, though, when I left. Because I, I stayed here yeah. last night to watch the draft and see who the Wolves pick, yeah. and then I, then I took off. I ended up leaving at like 8.30 or so or whatever. And going westbound 94, and, you know, I had breaks off into 35, you know, right when you're going over yes. the, you know, right. where you can look yeah. off and see U.S. Bank Stadium or whatever. Yeah. I got I got trapped in that left lane and I couldn't get over to yeah. stay on 94. I ended up having to go on 35. <laughs> it ended up taking me well, about another tra- 25 where was minutes. All the traffic about it, it's it's a it's yeah. the new it's the new configuration down there. They've yeah. thrown out barrels and where in the past you could be in the exit only lane, and then as soon as you hit the ramp for southbound 35W, you could still keep going right. on westbound 94. They've taken They've that taken away. They've taken that away. So now if you're That's stuck in that move. left lane, That's you're going on 35 yeah, no, unless you, you get over. Yeah, yeah, I spent all day warning people yesterday yeah. about that. You can't be in that left lane. It took gonna... me about another half hour to get home <laughs> because, because I, had to go all the, I had to go all the way down to like 46. <laughs> yeah, there's no, and, yeah. I've, I've had that happen a couple of times. There's nothing <laughs> worse because, yeah, they... And they keep taking bridges out so you can't get but, By the way, I, I cut across town over Franklin mm-hmm. uh, a One lane week open. ago or yeah. something. Good luck. Yeah. Rent yeah. a helicopter. God yeah. almighty. <laughs> it's unbelievable. That's one lane open. And anyway, they are hey, if you, if you see a fat guy in a 2017 Buick LaCrosse driving through the tunnel and you want to move over, excuse me, <laughs> if you want to move over, Move, let yeah. me, give me a hint. That's yeah. all I'm saying. Give me a hint. You and Joe always getting calls while you guys are on the air. Uh, Joe was complaining about it, it when they were out at O'Gara's. He was somebody was calling him. This is somebody giving my last chance to do something. You know, for like nine years, I've had my last <laughs> chance to extend the warranty of my 2013 Buick LaCrosse, which I haven't had for five years. <laughs> 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 all right, we'll be back. We expect to be talking to Timberwolves coach Tom Thibodeau in about 15 minutes about yep. last night's dry draft, which I consider successful. I thought I, I thought they did the really guard. well. I like, I like the, the guard. I like both guys that they got. Hey, that's uh, you know, there's nothing wrong with having somebody who will guard somebody. Yeah. And uh, the Keita kid from uh, Ohio Kata State was yeah. not supposed to be there. Yeah, they had to take him at that point if he and, fell that far. And uh, you know, when you lose, uh, if you lose Belita, that's uh, that could be your guy, right? Yeah, that, absolutely. Uh, gets those minutes. I think they'll both play some. Even with our guy Tibbs, they'll play some. I think so. Anyway, we expect to talk to him, and we will be introducing a musical guest uh, that I musical guest that I've been threatening to uh, have as on the uh, show for uh, quite some time. Uh, one of them is deceased, so it was hard negotiations mm-hmm. to go through to because I had to I had to contact his uh, the people in charge of his estate to make sure we could play the music today. Anyway, so we'll have that, and uh, Wetmore will check in with us from the ballpark about five o'clock to uh, let us know uh, how Esky's doing and uh, everything else. By the way, uh, Oregon State Beavers, who lost the opener in the uh, College World Series have uh, managed to stay unbeaten. They're playing Mississippi State today. 
Mississippi State is unbeaten. Oregon State's got to beat them. They're ahead of them 6-2 to today. They got to beat them today and then again tomorrow to advance to the uh, three uh, best of three playoff series. Mm-hmm. And Florida and Arkansas are in the other uh, semifinal, so to speak. And uh, uh, Arkansas is the unbeaten team there, so Florida's got to beat them twice. But that Oregon State team is pretty damn good. Program you know, director's focused in on those Razorbacks, though, because he's, uh, he's a big Arkansas guy. Mm, well, they're good. They're good. They are pretty good. They got some... They... Uh, they got football type fans cheering for them too. Have you seen some of the crowd shots? Really, big boys, <laughs> big boys with crew cuts, man. Some Bielema type guys, they, even though Bielema's not the coach. I can in tell you anymore. that. Uh, I can tell you those Omaha uh, barbecue joints are getting a workout, <laughs> getting a workout from those uh, Razorback fans. All right, we'll be back uh, with the ride with Ricey. Hi, this is Chris Howard, host of Plugged In with Chris Howard. It's crazy to think that a few weeks ago we were talking about whether or not Tua Tagovailoa should consider retiring after two concussions and worldwide debates on player safety and NFL culpability. Tua has done nothing but go back to work and currently has the Dolphins riding a three game win streak and one loss behind the division favorite Buffalo Bills. While everyone was yapping about the end of his career, Tua Tagovailoa said he'll decide when it's time and clearly he's not ready to hang up the cleats. Hi, this is Chris Howard from the Plugged In with Chris Howard podcast. BetOnline.net is your number one source for betting football and the start of the new basketball season. Find all the latest player developments, team matchups, news podcasts, and in-depth analysis on every game. BetOnline remains your continued source for all your sports wagering information with live betting up to the minute scores for every the fastest and easiest way to check in on all your favorite games and events, including the MLB playoffs, the start of the NHL season, MMA, boxing, and golf. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, where the game starts.